Hello everybody, and in this video I'm going to show you how to scrape web data from a website and use that data to form your own table or your own output using Python and kind of a fun little project that I thought of. So what we are going to do is we are going to scrape the web data from this web page and we want to get all of the names of the new cryptocurrencies and all of the prices on the new cryptocurrencies put those names and the prices inside of a separate array and then from those separate arrays we want to print them out in a table format so that way instead of having to go to this web page to find all the new cryptocurrencies we can just open up our terminal run this program and it gives us that data without ever having to open a browser that's one example of what web scraping can be used for it is kind of a bad one but it's really the best that I thought of and it is kind of a fun project idea so here's how we're going to do it. We're going to use something called beautiful soup and that's a uh, HTML parser that is in Python and it can be used for more than just that, but it is really good for HTML parsing, which means organizing HTML data and stripping it to get only what you want. And so we can install that by typing PIP install beautiful soup four. I already have it installed, so whenever it runs, it'll say requirement already satisfied. But if you didn't know, that's how you install it. And so we are going to make our main.py file. And I'm going to use Vim. You don't have to use Vim. You can use whatever you want. But because my machine can't really record and run a code editor at the same time, at least not without lagging, I'm going to use Vim just to... Uh, spare you guys from watching my mouse uh, glitch all over the screen. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to type vim main.py. And inside here, we are going to type user bin python, which isn't really necessary anymore, but I still do it out of habit. Import requests to get our uh, web page. And then from bs4 import beautiful soup as bs to import our beautiful soup and now what we need to do is we need to make something that downloads the html data from the web page and so our function to do that will be define get underscore html with our url as an argument and try get underscore html dot pg underscore data and we are doing that so that we can use the variable outside of the function equals requests dot get url and then we can add an exception if it doesn't work or accept my bad <laughs> print error getting the html data Oop. can't control s and vim and so now that we have that let's go ahead and make sure it works by typing get underscore html and then in quotations the name of our web page being coingecko.com slash new cryptocurrencies so we'll just copy that and paste it right here i keep putting wq i don't know why i keep doing that and so now we can try to print get underscore html dot pg underscore data and if it worked it'll return a uh a code it won't actually return the HTML it'll just return a code so Python 3 main.py awesome we got a 200 response that means it got the data and so now we need to make a function to parse the name and then we need to make another function to parse the price so what we need to do is we need to find out where the names are and that's really simple we can just hover over here and click inspect wait for that to load there it is 
and it's in the span class and then there's the class name and so what we are going to do is we are going to make a function to parse that so define parse underscore name and we need the uh, HTML data to go into it as an argument because that's what we need to parse through to get the name and we are going to say beautiful soup object equals beautiful soup dot or beautiful soup raw data dot content comma html dot parser and then we are going to do name data equals beautiful soup object dot find all so now the name data is going to be our beautiful soup object finding all and we decided we found out where the names are in the type span so that's the uh, bracket type and then the class of and then we'll just copy the class name because it's kind of long copy and paste and there we go now we need to make an array to hold all of these objects so what we're going to do is parse name dot name array equals a blank array and we're going to use a nested for loop to add all of these different objects into this array so we are going to say for in in name data because that's what's holding the uh, find all function for all of the spans with that class and for every element in in we're going to say parse name dot name array append so add this into the array element so every element the text and then strip that text so that way we only get the uh, price and not the blank space around it and now we want to do the exact same thing except this time for the price so define parse price raw data beautiful soup object equals beautiful soup use the raw data in argument content and then use the HTML parser and then we would need to make a price data variable so price data equals beautiful soup object dot find all and now we need to find out where all the prices are and so what we can do is we can just click here click inspect and let that bring up and we can see that they are all inside of this span class equals no wrap but because that class isn't very specific I want to use the div class because I'm sure that there's a lot of other numbers probably under the 24 volume or where FDV that question mark is that also have the span class of no wrap so we're going to try using the div and so what we can do is we can use div comma class underscore equal so that bracket type and then the class uh, let's look at what that was ltw dash flex dash one so tw dash flex dash one and then we are going to add an array to hold all of the price data so parse price dot price underscore array equals an empty array or in in price data and for every element in in we are going to say parse underscore price dot price underscore data dot append element dot text dot strip just like we did earlier and so now what we need to do is we need to make sure that these actually work and that they get the array variables and here's how we're going to do that 
we're going to run our parse underscore name function with our git html.pg data variable that we made earlier. And we're going to do the same thing with the price. And then we are just going to print the two arrays out and see if they print out the correct information. So print parse name dot name array print parse price dot price array. And then we're going to run that. We have an error function has no attribute price. Oh, okay. I guess I mistyped the name. So let's go fix that. Here we are. And as you can see, we have two huge arrays with the names and the prices. And we also have some empty space there, but uh, we can fix that pretty easily. So we're going to say vim main.py. So now that we know that it works and it actually gets the prices, and in a second, we're going to have to make sure that they're the correct prices. But now we know it works and it gets the prices. We can clean that array up by saying while there is a blank value in. Uh, actually, let's do this. Let's set a variable to uh, the price and name array. So price equals parse underscore price dot price underscore array and then name equals parse underscore name dot name underscore array and so while there's a blank value in price price dot remove a blank space and then we can print price to make sure that that worked Awesome, it worked. So now what we can do is we just need to print out our two arrays together in a table and we can use a for loop to do that. So for j in range zero to the length of our name array, we can print format in our print format we can say name j colon closing caret let's do let's start out with 20 characters and that's for the name and for the price we can say price for every j colon closing caret and we can do 20 characters again let's run that and see how that looks awesome so now we formatted our arrays into a table and our arrays hold the scraped data from the website however the only issue is that this is a little bit sticking out and so is this one and so we can fix that really quick by just typing uh, instead of 20 characters, let's say 30, because I don't think any of them extend past 30 characters. I'd be surprised if they did. And so now Python 3 main.py. Awesome. And as you can see, they're all in line. We have the name and the price. Let's make sure that those are actually correct, though. So if we go back to the website, close that out, you can see curve phi USDC is 0.928, curve phi USDC 0.928, Helena is 0.151, Helena 0.151, Wrestling Sheba 0.00004, Wrestling Sheba 
Awesome. So we got the correct data in our output. All right, and then Q ATAR. Let's look at the very bottom to make sure that's correct. Q ATAR 0.0003 and 0.003. Awesome. All right, well, that is how you parse HTML data and scrape HTML data from a website. And those are some different tricks that you can use once you have that scrape data. And I hope that you guys learned something. I hope this helped. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope you have a good day.